This is Rick Rule for Rule Investment Media. Sponsors of the Natural Resource Investment Symposium, July 7 through 11, held in Boca Raton, Florida. Whether you attend personally in Boca Raton or join thousands of others via the live stream, please note two things. The first is that we will present more programming in four days than you can absorb in four days. So we will have recordings available, which you should make use of after the conference. Note too, that every exhibitor uh, and every speaker will be interviewed by me personally before the, before the conference so that you can pay attention to the business and the exhibitors uh, that will be at the conference, allocating your time both before and during the conference much more efficiently. Uh, further, note that every exhibitor at the conference has been vetted. At most conferences, the requirement to be an exhibitor is simply a check that cashes. They are advertisers. At my conference, I own every public company in the conference in my own accounts or in accounts owned partially and managed by myself. No guarantee because I buy a stock that the stock goes up, but there is a guarantee that they've been vetted. Similarly, every service provider, uh, like the next one, uh, is one that I have to have done business with or that I have to have recommended in the past with no complaints during my very, very long duration serving investors like yourself. Uh, I have the great pleasure to interview a friend of very long standing, Mr. Van Simmons, who I've known for the better part of four decades. Van, thank you, first of all, for your efforts on behalf of collectibles investors, myself included. And thank you, too, for your ongoing support of the Natural Resources Investment Symposiums. Well, thank you for having me. I'm very honored. Van, you and I have known each other for a very long time, uh, going back to the uh, Blanchard conferences in New Orleans, uh, when both of us had hair uh, to worry That's about right. combing. Uh, and you have been or were referred to me uh, then as really the grandfather of the collectibles industry. I've had the pleasure of being in your own house uh, and seeing uh, really a museum quality collection. You're known primarily in the rare coin business, but the truth is that you have a passion for and a knowledge of uh, collectibles that's really uh, unparalleled. To that end, I'm delighted to get deeper into the collectibles business with you. Let's begin uh, with an overview of the services of David Hall, uh, and I think it's fair to say David Hall, Rare Coins and Collectibles, because you have been involved and are involved in many aspects of the collectibles ind industry, albeit primarily Rare Coins. So well, tell I us mean, our business, go ahead. Tell us something about the services of, of, of the business currently. David and I have been business partners for 45 years, and he's always needed his name and lights, which Hence, the name of the company is David Hall Rare Coins. I never wanted Van Simmons on there anyplace, but he's been a fantastic partner. We've been partners 50-50 for decades, four decades. And um, we both like odd things or collectible things, things that have tangible value, things that are collectible, things that have been desirable throughout history. So we've specialized in usually very high quality collectibles or very rare collectibles, mostly rare coins, I collect Indian peace metals, rare coins, antique firearms. You know, you've been to my house. I, I can keep going on. I've got over a thousand pocket knives. David collects French art glass and things like that and coins and everything. So our expertise has been basically a battlefield of learning. You know, we wrote a book years ago called The Mercenary's Guide to the Rare Coin Market because it seemed like whenever we went to a coin show, we were mercenaries and they're fighting the, the fight in 19... 86, we started a company called PCGS, Professional Coin Grading Service. And then in 1993, I think it was, we started another company called PSA, Professional Sports Authenticators, where we had, I think about, we sold the business three years ago. It was public. We took it public in 99, and then it got taken private about three years ago. And at that time, I had about 1,800 authorized dealers around the world who sold my product in coins. And I think about 1,450 authorized sports cards dealers, you know, baseball cards, football cards, things like that. And um, those two markets have expanded greatly. I think about 10 years ago, eBay told me 1,240 of our baseball cards trade on eBay every hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So 
It's the most widely searched I PSA is the most widely searched item on eBay, or it was 10 years ago. I haven't checked in the last 10 years, but I was very flattered. So our expertise is buying things that people want to buy either to make money or collect. And the funny part is all my collectors all say they're collectors. They're not in it for the investment, but they always call me and say, what's my coin worth now? What's my coin worth now? Sometimes they go up, sometimes they go down, just like just like stocks, different cycles. They can go down for five or 10 years and then soar in price for five or 10 years. So my, my objective has always been to buy the very best coins that I can buy for clients that I think have the best potential. That answers So your obviously you saw a need 25 years ago for a standardization uh, in the coin business, which is why you and David founded the authentication business. In those days, there were many standards and some of them weren't particularly objective. You, you fixed that, which I think goes uh, to your expertise. Uh, tell us something today about uh, why rare coin, uh, existing rare coin investors or people who are considering rare coins should deal with uh, Van Simmons. There's a whole bunch of people out there, uh, including your corner coin store, <laughs> which yeah. would like to compete in that space, but you seem to have prevailed over four decades. Why? I think it's just trying to do the right thing for the clients, trying to buy, you know, David and I both have a really good eye. I think between the two of us and a wide variety of collectibles, I'm not talking about antique furniture and things like that, although we both have collected Tiffany lamps and different glassware and things like that over the years. So we have a small amount of expertise in that. Again, in those areas, it depends on how much money I've spent and how much money I've lost, depending, you know, gives me an example of how smart I am. But I mean, our expertise has been finding the best coins. I was just going through a client's portfolio half an hour ago. He's got like 15 or 20 coins that I need to call him on and tell him to sell them because they've gone up dramatically. The market in the last five years, the really rare exotic things have gone up tremendously. Tremendously. So tremendously being this isn't gold mining shares that were penny stocks that go up 10 to one. But I mean, if they go up four or five, six hundred percent in about a 10 or 15 year period, that's a pretty good return on investment. And a lot of times I call clients and say, you know, it's time to liquidate this area of your portfolio. Some of them sell, some of them don't. Their question is, you know, would you sell? And then it depends on what the coin is. So because certain coins become very underpriced, right? Become very underpriced at different times and overpriced. Because I never had uh, expertise in rare coins, I sort of collected them uh, as art. Uh, one of the things I liked about you is that when I expressed my interest in American history, you said, oh, well, you need to own the Lewis and Clark. Um, can you talk about some of the themes? Uh, if you didn't consider these things to be investments, but rather uh, consider them to be art, uh, what do you think is of interest? And if there's anything that's particularly undervalued now, any sector, what might that be? The themes, I think a lot of people don't realize every time a U.S. coin changed a design, you know, from a Mercury dime to a Roosevelt dime or a Liberty seated quarter. And then in 1853, they lowered the silver content in coins. And so they put arrows at the date and rays on the back of the coin for two years. And then in 1873, they did it again, depending on the value of silver and stuff like that. Every change in a coin's design was a change in something that was going on in the world. So. One of the nice things is you can look up every coin and see the history of where it came from, what it is, why it is, and things like that. As far as coins that are undervalued, or let's say historical coins, to me, every coin has a story, but a good example is I, I had a client one time and he looked, we, what happened is everybody buys St. Gaudens. Well, the original St. Gaudens was made in 1907, struck in 1907. President Roosevelt hired Augustus St. Gaudens to design the most beautiful coin. So he designed the $10 Indian and the $20 St. Gaudens. Well, the $20 coin and the $10 Indian, he died before they were actually finished. And the relief, the carving was too high on the front and the back and the coins couldn't stack. They rocked back and forth and it was hard to get the die, the gold up into the die to get them fully struck. So the, like, let's say the, 11, the $20 gold piece, I think they made approximate, the numbers vary. But approximately 11,000 to 12,000 coins. And when you look at that, and then they hired Charles Barber to redesign the coin because uh, the banks all returned a lot of them because they couldn't stack them and stuff. So then they were sent back. So they hired Charles Barber. So everybody's got a St. God's today in 1908 or 1927 or 24. That's a Charles Barber St. God's. The original one, if you hold the two together, it's dramatically different. And it's, I had one client in here who said it's 
like our purest form of our American heritage. I mean, it's like the most beautiful U.S. Co most beautiful coin struck worldwide in most people's opinion, and also one of the most collectible. They've been the same price for about eight to ten years. Does that mean they're underpriced? I mean, I think they're they're not as rare as most people think, but they're certainly as popular. And collectibles, it's not always what's rare is a big factor, but the other thing is what's popular. If people want to buy collect, a lot of people don't collect Roosevelt dimes because nobody cares about them. But Mercury dimes, Liberty seated dimes, and things like that are ultra beautiful, and everybody loves them, and everybody collects them, and they're a big part of our history. That answer anything? No, it helps. It's very, very helpful. Uh, I know from now almost thirty years of putting on conferences, Van, uh, that uh, the population of my conferences uh, fits in very well with people who are interested and have the means to collect. Uh, for people who are either established collectors or people who are interested in the rare coin and collectibles market, uh, who should they contact uh, and how should they contact them? Well, I'm a one man shop, basically. I mean, I'm myself and I have a full time CPA and three other employees. One answers the phone, one does the shipping and receiving and the other one does inventory and stuff and myself and David. So I'm the only one they can contact. They can contact me via email, which is van at davidhall.com or call me at 1-800-759-7575. And I'm usually here from 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time to two or three in the afternoon, five days a week. At 73 yeah, years I, old, I'm still working hard. So just like you. <laughs> yeah, failed retirement, just like me. It'll be like That's old it. home week to have you back at the conference, Van. We've done conferences yeah. together for many years. Uh, yes, and uh, I, I would urge people, whether or not you uh, have an abiding current interest in rare coins, to go by Van's booth because he will have a spectacular collection of things on display. And, and he will exhibit spectacular knowledge if you bring something out of your pocket in terms of what it might be <laughs> and what it might be worth. Van, thank you for four decades of work on behalf of collectibles investors. And thank you in particular for your ongoing support in, uh, uh, of the Natural Resources Investment Symposium. Appreciate it very much. Honored to be there.